All right, so I'm going to show you how to rank up staff members in the quickest way that I know how. And uh, the first thing that needs to be done, however, in order to allow this method that I use to be done, is you have to go to mission number four. You have to complete mission number four at least once. Or, if you'd like, you can go to that particular location in free roam uh, before you actually complete mission number four. And essentially, you have to destroy the anti-air radar at this particular uh, location, this enemy outpost, so to speak. Alright, so as an alternative to completing mission number four, uh, you can go into free roam and uh, you may not, may or may not have this landing zone, I'm not sure, but essentially you just got to get to this place here, it's called the Eastern Communications Post. This is where it's located on the map in Afghanistan. And so you want to get here. You're not going to have this landing zone unless you've been there already and done what I'm about to show you to do. So basically just do it, whatever you can to get to Eastern Communications Post. Uh, you know, obviously if you're at Mission 4, you can do Mission 4. Or if you want to just do it in free roam, this is where you need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and we're going to go ahead and Head there and I'll show you what you need to do first. Okay, so here I am at the Eastern Communications Post. It's, um, and I want to show you what your target is in order to be able to complete this mission as quickly as possible. At least mission number four. I'm in free run right now. So once again, here we are, Eastern Communications Post. And I am positioned, I've positioned myself where I can show you the anti-air radar that needs to be destroyed in order for you to unlock the ability to fly over this base uh, in your helicopter without leaving it. But essentially the main thing is you want to destroy this anti-air radar. So get in there, you know, take out all these guys however you see fit and destroy the anti-air radar and you will be good to go for this next part that I'm going to show you. You basically go back to your ACC, your Aerial Command, and you go into Staff Management. Uh, the reason you want to do this uh, is because you want to pick whichever staff member you want to rank up in their abilities. And I'm going to explain how uh, it's possible to do that. And I'm going to pick out a staff member from the base development unit and we, what you usually I like to do is uh, I will sort the staff members uh, in descending order of their suitability for that particular uh, mother base unit. So once I've done that uh, it'll show me the very top person that I have in that unit. His stats are pretty good but however there is a way to increase his stats by earning him what's called medals. There are two different medals that you can earn in the game. And I will explain to you what those are now. So I'm going to go back to the sorting list and I'm going to sort people by medals in descending order. And if you notice, the difference between this character and the last character you saw is that there are two icons in the bottom right hand corner of his picture. And if you look at his ability ranking stats, you see that part of it is yellow. It's highlighted in yellow. Now why is that? It's because he, he's earned both medals that you can earn for characters in order to increase their abilities. Each of those medals gives a certain amount of what's called ability points, which is what is, determines the ability rank of your character in whatever department. So uh, the left-hand uh, icon there on the bottom right-hand corner of the picture is called a it's a representation of a service cross medal and there are two different ways you can earn that medal uh, one being if you happen to extract what's called a puppet soldier and the reason they're called a puppet soldier without giving too much away is because they're being controlled by certain enemies in the game which you will meet at some point and if you happen to extract those particular types of characters or enemies they will earn that medal there are three missions in the game 
that will allow you to rescue a staff member that's being taken hostage. If you happen to rescue a staff member that's been taken hostage, he will also earn the Service Cross Medal. The second medal on the right is called a Distinguished Service Medal, and that is awarded to individuals who earn nine distinction ability points. The way that you obtain those points are several different ways. One, you can complete a mission using that character instead of Big Boss, which will earn you one to three distinguished points out of that nine. You can also complete a dispatch mission. In other words, you send him on a combat deployment. So that means you have to successfully send the character out on dispatch missions uh, approximately... Okay, actually he earns two points. The character earns two points for every dispatch mission. So as long as they successfully complete like five missions. So that's, you know, pretty much the way that most people are going to earn medals for their characters. Because you're going to go to your, uh, you know, you go to your missions and you go to combat deployment, for example. And I'll show you a quick way of uh, earning medals for people when you do combat deployments. So basically what you can do is you can go to your combat deployment, you know, what I like to do is I press triangle in my case, but it could be uh, Y if you're playing on Xbox, uh, to assemble the unit and that allows you to manually select which agents are sent out on a mission. So as you can see here, it, it selected one automatically down here on the bottom of the list. I list them in, you know, highest rank to lowest. So I usually like to deselect whoever is being selected and I start from the top and I go down the list one by one and I look and see which ones don't have a medal yet and those are the ones that I will send on the mission because as you know if, if you know in order to earn a medal they have to go on a certain amount of missions in order to earn that medal four or five so you just go to the list and you select whichever um, members don't have a medal to send off on a you know, combat deployment. And once you do that, you know, you go to the, the, the other team, if there happens to be other members from a different team, you find the ones that are selected, deselect those, and then, you know, once again, start from the top. I usually, you know, do it in descending order. And just go down the list until you find people who don't have the medal. Select those people. And this is how I earn, you know, it seems to be, to me, like the fastest way to ensure that anybody who doesn't have a medal will earn a medal. Now you have to keep in mind at all times that whenever you do this, whoever you select, there's a possibility that one or two of these people will be lost during the mission because they'll, you know, be killed in action. So if, if you do it, if you have good members in your team, you can manually select people and you'll get a 95% success probability and 3% predicted losses. You're not always going to lose people at 3% loss, but every once in a while you do. So keep, in, keep that in mind when you're selecting these people. When I first started the game, I generally tended to not care about this too much, about who I lost. But after a while, I realized that, you know, I, I'd like to keep certain members that have certain abilities because they benefit uh, either they benefit me either when I'm sending them I'm playing as them while I'm doing missions instead of snake so I like to try to keep the members that actually have skills and I and I generally tend to send the ones that don't have skills like this one for example and that way if I happen to lose that character then I'm not you know I'm not going to be missing them too much so just keep that in mind that there's always a possibility that whoever you select you're gonna lose. So, generally speaking, try to select people that you are willing to lose. You're you're okay with losing them. Okay, one thing I uh, almost forgot to do is to show how to uh, select whichever staff member you want to rank up in their abilities. You know, I need to go to base development, and I wanted to pick one of the characters out of my base development unit, and so. Uh, Obviously, I want to pick this guy. This is the top guy right here. He doesn't have any medals. 
So we want to earn him a medal. And so we're going to go ahead and select him. Make sure that he has, uh, you put him under direct contract. If you look in the bottom part of the screen, you'll see that if I press L2, I either put him on direct contract or don't put him on direct contract. And what that does is it stops him from being automatically placed in different units. It stops the game from switching his wherever you put him automatically. And that generally tends to happen uh, if his stats happen to be better for a different unit than the one you put him in. So I'm just currently uh, putting him under direct contract, uh, mainly to protect him and to keep him from being moved around. And I want to put him in the waiting room. So what you do is you select him, press OK on him, and then you put him in the waiting room. All right, and then what you want to do is you want to go to your combat unit because these, are the, these this is the list of the people that you can send on combat deployment missions or that you can select to play as during the game. So in order to make that other character show up in the list, depending on what his stats are at, I usually take the top person in the combat unit, which is usually the guy that's going to show up on the top of the list when you're selecting a, a character, and I put him either in a waiting in the waiting room, or sometimes I, I make him fill the spot that, that that is lost by taking the guy out of whatever place. So, so for example, I took him out of base development unit, my original character. So I'm going to replace him temporarily with the character from the combat unit. And you're going to have to you know keep a mental note of this so you don't put people in the wrong departments and leave them there. So anyway, I've had him in the waiting room, so I'm going to take him out of the waiting room now. And now that I've freed up space in the combat unit, I'm going to put him in the combat unit. So once I've done that, I want to make sure I, I don't lose his name. So I'm going to have to uh, sort this by uh, uh, direct contract. And hopefully I can find his name in here. He's at the top of the list here, so... So there's a Creeping Eagle is the guy that I want to uh, level up. You go to your missions, select the mission that you want to do. And now, once again, this mission is going to take place at the Eastern Communications Post. And you want to select uh, once you've opened up this landing zone by doing what I asked you to do earlier, destroying that anti-air radar, then you can select that landing zone. So once you've selected your mission and you've, uh, you know, you get to the, uh, the sortie prep screen, you want to try to make sure that the amount of GMP that you spend going into it is as cheap as possible. And so far the cheapest I've uh, seen is uh, 540 GMP. And basically all I do is I just go to select equipment. Uh, what I like to do is I make a loadout. You know, I pre-select, I'm pre-made a loadout. Loadout 1 is what I use to, uh, whenever I want to go into a mission with the absolute bare minimum of equipment. And so I generally just pick the first thing that I see, the assault rifle. Uh, it'll start off with the most expensive version. What you want to do is press left until you, uh, on the D-pad or the uh, thumbstick, until the stars go away, which means it'll basically put it down to the cheapest version that you've ever had. And uh, that's 70 GMP in my case. And obviously I don't select anything for the other weapon. And secondary weapons, same thing. You know, you just go to uh, your standard uh, silent tranquilizing handgun and you make the cheapest version of the one that you deploy with. You're not going to need any of these weapons, so there's no point in getting the most expensive stuff. You just end up spending money for nothing. And then I just make sure there's nothing in support weapons nothing in items and I go to tools and it'll most likely want to give you the the highest versions of these tools like the Fulton device and you want to basically make the cheapest version available okay so that's 540 GMP is what you should come out to after you've uh, gotten rid of everything so once you do that you know you can select a buddy if you want you can actually rank up buddies while you're doing this as well if you have a, a lower uh, bond rating for a particular buddy, you can bring them along and it will earn bond level. Every time you deploy with a buddy, you earn bond level with that buddy. Alright, so let's go ahead and start the mission. 
and this is pretty much the fastest way that I know of to rank up characters. What you want to do is just basically do this mission the way that I'm doing it now about three times consecutively and you should be able to get your uh, character to earn a distinguished medal in order to rank his abilities up. Once he opens the door, look to your left and activate the Gatling gun. I usually recommend going into first person mode. The first target is going to be right there behind that icon, which is that little dish that I just destroyed. The second one is right here. The third one is going to be right behind this. And you got to wait a little bit for it to come out, and there it is right there. Then you want to exit cannon by pressing triangle or Y and press down on your thumb pad to go to the other side of the helicopter. This will limit the amount of times that you get hit during this particular mission. You can stay on this side of the helicopter until it makes a turn right after this one. You're gonna usually you you will hear the helicopter engine kind of go up in uh, RPMs. This is the moment right here, and this is where you want to press down on your thumb pad to go to the other side, or thumb stick rather. And that's it. And as long as you just do that. Uh, if you do it fast enough, you can usually avoid getting hit completely, but it's not really necessary. Uh, I've gotten hit up to seven, eight, eight times, and it hasn't uh, decreased the score significantly enough. Mission complete, and how? They're going to tell stories about this one, boss. So, you, now that you see, I can S-rank this pretty much by doing it this way, and uh, since I have very little deployment cost, the you know I gain a pretty decent amount of money. You can you can do other missions to earn more money. This is not the best way to, to earn GMP. All right, so this is gonna be the third time that I've done this mission now in a row. And if you notice, I I got awarded the Distinguished Service Medal. Now we can go ahead and uh, take a look at that uh, that particular staff member's uh, stats. I'm going to go direct contracts and Creeping Eagle. There you go, Distinguished Service Medal, and he's ranked up a little bit. Now, I mean, for this, uh, you know, if he only has one medal, he only gets a certain amount of ability points, so he didn't rank up any further than S, but if I were to get him another medal, either by repeating certain missions in the game in which he happens to get uh, taken hostage, and I rescue him, then he will earn the additional medal, which will probably take him up to at least an S+. Plus. Hopefully. I don't know for sure, because I've never actually done that yet. But anyway, that's how you earn a, uh, a, a medal for a character pretty quickly, I would say. Three missions, you know, it takes a couple of minutes, and you're good. Alright, so uh, thank you for watching, and hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day.